Hello Performance Ninjas and welcome to the lab assignment for loop tiling. Frankly, there is not much to talk about in this video, so I decided to combine this introduction and summary into a single video. As usual, quick introduction into the topic and then I will show the solution for the lab and my analysis. So let's go. The idea of loop blocking or tiling is to split the multidimensional execution range into a smaller chunks, usually called tiles, so that each individual block will itself fit into the CPU caches. So if an algorithm works with multidimensional arrays, and perform strided accesses to their elements, there is a high chance of poor cache utilization. So consider this classical example of matrix multiplication, where the two input matrices are large enough and do not fit into the CPU caches. Well, naive code will perform poorly because the elements of matrix B are accessed column-wise, right? And so that the every access to an element of matrix B will likely require bringing in the new cache line from memory and this may potentially push out the data from the cache that will be required later. And so this is known as cache eviction problem. On the right image, we partition our matrix multiplication into a smaller multidimensional chunks so that the each two tiles together will fit into the CPU cache fully, right? And so we ensure that there is no need to push out the data that will be required later, right? And so you see loop blocking is all about fully reusing the data from every cache line before evicting it from the cache. The most interesting thing in this transformation is actually how do you select the size of the tile, right? Because you can block for different levels of the cache hierarchy, all depending on the problem at hand and whether you need to share cache with other threads, right? And I strongly encourage to use a roofline model in your experiments. This is really helpful. Let's take a look at the code. This is another classical uh, problem of a transposing the matrix, right? And then, so auto vectorization doesn't work here since the out matrix is accessed column wise. So as always, the first thing that we do is we take the baseline measurements. And okay, this lab is quite simple. And so without further ado, I will show the solution for this lab. However, if you still want to work on this lab yourself, it is now a good time to pause the video, uh, go to the code of the lab and try to fix it yourself. Having said that, here is how you can block the loop for this algorithm, right? So notice I introduced two new loops. Those two outermost loop, they iterate over the tiles, right? And then those two inner loops, they actually process elements within a single tile. It's that simple. By the way, I recently introduced a new way how you can compare results of your experiments against the baseline. Let me show you. So you need essentially to guard your solution with the special if dev. Something like this. So you see we have uh, our solution guarded under special if dev and otherwise we will just use the baseline code. All right, so now that you've done that, there is a special script called check speedup.py, which is a part of Performance Ninja repository, right? So in this case, it will benchmark your solution against the baseline three times, right? And you also need to provide the arguments for the script, which are passed to the lab assignment that you are solving right now. So this is, in my case, it is loop tiling underscore one. And the second argument is the path to the Google benchmark library. Let's see how it works. All right, so this script 
benchmark our solution against the baseline three times and here are the results of those experiments right so as we can see uh, we had the 68% speed up again 68 and then 74% speed up all right let me know what you think about this script i hope you will like it let's go back and talk about the tile size for a minute on my machine the sweet spot was 16 because it allows both tiles to fully fit into the L1D cache. But ultimately, this loop is bound by the speed of the DRAM. Well, it's because there is zero arithmetic in this loop, and we essentially just stream the data. In any case, for the best load store performance, it is crucial to have the data in the L1D cache, since it is the fastest cache with the lowest access latency. Here is the Rupline diagram of the two experiments that I made captured by Intel Advisor. And so this red square is my baseline and this red circle is my solution, right? And then first of all, you can see that the arithmetic intensity is indeed very low. There is almost no arithmetic operations, well, probably besides jumps. You can see that performance, you know, skyrocketed I was able to reach the level of the DRAM bandwidth, which is good. Uh, this maybe can be improved further. Uh, if you are able to come up with a faster algorithm, let me know. I will be super interested to see that. Let's get back to the code. And you see, one of the problems in loop blocking is that you have to explicitly define the size of the tile for each and every platform. It's because the size of the caches may be different, right? And so such a code can be hard to maintain. To tackle this problem, one can employ the so-called cache oblivious technique, which is essentially a divide and conquer approach. Uh, this will be your homework. Try implementing this cache oblivious algorithm for this lab assignment. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I added a few links about loop blocking and cache oblivious algorithms in the comments section under this video. See you in the next lab assignment. Take care.